In this video, we're going to explore a concept called scaling ratios. You know, we've already seen what a ratio is. We looked at unit ratios, unit rates, and we now want to utilize this relationship between two quantities to find additional equivalent ratios, and that's known as scaling. And so a common place where we're going to use this type of reasoning is when we're calculating dosage and when we're considering the strength of medication or an IV that we might be administering. So over here on the right, I'm given a label for a medication, uh, diphenhydramine, and this is high potency, it says. And it says the ratio or the strength of this medication is 50 milligrams per ml. So it's written as 50 milligrams per ml. We can write this a couple different ways. We can write this as 50 milligrams over one ml, or we can maybe write it as we saw on the label here. These are identical ways. This is the ratio that we see. Now, a dosage calculation is truly just a proportion problem, and we can usually solve dosage calculations by scaling ratios, or at least we can estimate quantities and maybe catch errors by scaling ratios. And what we mean by scaling ratios, and I'm going to go to the next slide here, scaling a ratio is referring to multiplying or dividing the numerator and denominator of that ratio by the same non-zero value. So if I were to rewrite that ratio of 50 milligrams per 1 ml, we can find an equivalent ratio, equivalent strength, by multiplying the numerator and denominator, or dividing, by the same value. And this value is known as the scale factor, we can scale the ratio using what's referred to as the scale factor, or we can call this the covarying factor, meaning that the numerator and denominator are co together, varying by the same value. So let me just do an example. Let me scale this ratio by a factor of two. And usually when we're talking about a factor, it's multiplication. So if I were to scale this ratio by a factor of two, then I would multiply the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2, and that will result in an equal equivalent relationship here. So if I take 50 times 2, I get 100 milligrams. And if I take 1 milliliter times 2, I get 2 milliliters. These are equivalent ratios. We've already seen this idea of a unit ratio where the unit ratio is just the simplified ratio for the, you know, the denominator is one unit. And scaling is kind of the opposite. And it's, I mean, we can scale either, you know, making that numerator and denominator smaller by a factor, or we could maybe multiply by one half if we wanted to, and I'll do that in a moment. But what we just did there is find, is found an equivalent ratio, equivalent ratio to 50 milligrams per one ml. What this means is, if a patient were to receive two milliliters of this medication, then they would be getting 100 milligrams. The strength or the concentration in both of these ratios is identical. So a patient getting one milliliter would be getting 50 milligrams of the drug. A patient getting two milliliters would be getting 100 milligrams of the drug. And we can also do a little bit of scaling with whatever factor we want. So if I just want to do that again, maybe I want to think about maybe the patient's not getting one milliliter. Maybe they're getting a half of a milliliter. So if I multiply the denominator by one half, then I'm going to have one milliliter times one half. It's just 0 0.5 or one half. You can write either. Now, remembering if we want the relationship to hold, then we need to multiply by the same value. So if I multiply the numerator also by one half, by the scale factor of one half, notice I'm multiplying them by the same value. So that means this ratio is going to have the same relationship between the numerator and denominator. 50 times one half is 25. So if a patient got a half a milliliter, then they got 25 milligrams. Let's look at a different example. So here we are told we have organic seedless grapes. And the ratio that we're provided, they are 148 per pound. And what we want to do is to use the ratio provided in the sign to identify equivalent ratios. So it doesn't say 
what ratios to find. It just says to find equivalent ratios. So let's find a few. I'm first going to write my ratio, which given to me is $1.48 per one pound. And we know we can write this in a couple different ways. I could also write this because I'm, I'm not really solving necessarily for any particular value here. I could also invert this ratio and talk about one pound to $1.48. So either one of these is appropriate. I'm going to just utilize the 148 over one pound because that's what's given to me in the sign. If you want to pause this video and find some equivalent ratios, go ahead and do that. It just means to scale. Scale this by the same factor. So let's scale this by, let's say I buy three pounds. So I don't buy one pound, I buy three pounds. Well, then I know if I'm scaling the denominator by a factor of three, for this relationship to hold, to find an equal ratio, I need to multiply by the same value in the numerator. So by taking 148, 1.48 times 3, I get 444. And I know 1 times 3 is 3 pounds. So this is one equivalent ratio. Maybe you multiplied by 2. Maybe you multiplied by 5. Uh, maybe right now what I want to do is maybe I want to buy a three quarters of a pound. So I'm going to multiply by three quarters. This would be an equivalent ratio. And you can multiply the numerator and denominator by any scale factor that you'd like. So I'm going to buy three quarters of a pound. So I'm going to multiply the numerator by three quarters, which is also equivalent to 0 0.75. And I know if I multiply the numerator by that value or the denominator by that value, in order for this relationship to hold, I have to scale this or multiply by the same value. So in the denominator, I'm going to get 3 quarters of a pound, or 0.75. And if I multiply 1.48 times 3 quarters, I'm going to get $1.11. All of these ratios, 148 per pound, 444 per 3 pounds, 111 to 3 quarters of a pound. These are all of equal ratios. They're all equivalent. They all reduce to the same thing. Let's look at one more example where we can use scale factors. So here we're given a label for an IV bag. This is for heparin, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the course. And what we want to do is just describe this bag, what's in this bag of heparin, what the unit ratio is in units per ml, which is a little bit of a review. And then we're going to use scale factors just to identify some additional equivalent ratios. So the first thing I want to do is just look at this bag and identify what's going on. So I see this bag has 500 milliliters of fluid in it. So it's 500 mLs of fluid. And it's not just any fluid. It's actually normal saline or half saline, excuse me, 0 0.45 sodium chloride, which we'll see a little bit later in the course. And it has 25,000 units. So this has 500 mLs of fluid, and this is heparin, and it has 25,000 units of heparin, which is just one way to measure heparin, is the number of units. Now, what's the unit ratio of units per mL? So I want to know the number of units per 1 mL. I can do that by just setting up the ratio. There are 25,000 units in 500 mLs. If I want to find the unit ratio, that means I need to just do the division, which is really the same as scaling as well. We're just scaling, in this case, by a factor of 1 over 500. So I'm just going to do that division. And what we should get is 50 units. But let me just double check, 25,000 divided by 500, we do. We get 50 units per 1 mL. And we could also write that as 50 units per mL. That's the unit ratio. And now let's use scale factors just to find some additional equivalent ratios. We already have two ratios that we know are equal. We have 25,000 units over 500 mLs. We have 50 units over 1 mL. These are equal ratios. So let's just find a few more. And if you want to pause the video 
to find some additional equal ratios. We, we may not find the same ones, but go ahead and do that. Now, it doesn't matter which ratio I use here. So maybe I'll start with the 25,000 units per 500 mLs. And I'm going to scale this by a factor of, let's say, 3. So if I multiply the denominator by 3, and I multiply the numerator by 3, because I'm multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same factor, the same non-zero factor, then I know I'm going to have an equal ratio. I'll have 1,500 mLs in the denominator, and I'll have 75,000 units in the numerator. So that's an equivalent ratio. And maybe I'll find one more. So maybe this time I'm going to start with the 50 units over 1 ml. These are all equivalent ratios. And now I'm going to scale, let's say, by, in this one, I'm going to scale by 10. So I'm going to multiply the denominator by 10, multiply the numerator by 10. And since I'm multiplying by the same scale factor or the same co-varying factor, in the denominator I'll have 10 mLs, in the numerator I'll have 500. And this is units, not mLs. So all of these, and I'm just going to circle some of them, all of these ratios that I found are all equivalent. They're all equal to one another. They're all equal. They all reduce to the same concentration or strength of 50 units per ml. They're just written a little bit differently. And so scaling ratios, multiplying by the same factor, numerator and denominator, is an important skill. And it'll allow us to actually solve missing value proportions. If we can identify the scale factor in the numerator, or if we can identify the scale factor in the denominator in a proportion, which we'll see in a moment, then we can identify that missing value. So knowing that equal ratios, equivalent ratios can be scaled, we can solve missing value proportions, which we're going to get to in the next section of this module.